Hello and welcome to the second in the tutorials for using SketchUp for foam RC aircraft design. Uh, in this one we're going to be talking about drawing shapes and geometry as well as manipulating and changing those shapes and then also pulling them into three-dimensional objects as well as uh, some of the more conceptual type of elements in SketchUp called inference and snapping. So to start off with this is our default scene. I'm going to select our default person here and just hit delete on the keyboard that clears out that object. And looking up here we have our different drawing tools and I'm going to start with just a square. And you'll notice that once you click and start to move that I'm still holding down the mouse button and you'll see every once in a while it gets this uh, little dotted line. And if you hold for a moment you'll notice that the, the actual pencil tool shows that it's currently set at what's called the golden section. Uh, you can Google what that is. It's uh, sort of a mathematical bit of beauty in there. Uh, but then once you release the mouse button, you've now drawn a flat square. Uh, depending on where you release it, you're either going to draw a flat square in one axis or another. Now, a quick kind of uh, shortcut for orbiting as well, if you have a mouse that has a click wheel, in other words you have the wheel that we talked about in our previous one for zooming, but if that wheel also clicks you can hold that down and that will allow you to automatically be in orbit until you release that and then you're back to whatever tool you had. So that's very handy. So again, we're drawing squares here. Now I'm going to switch over to our regular parallel projection view. You'll notice that now we can see that parallel projection we no longer have perspective. We're looking at things in more of a blueprint sort of CAD-like isometric view. Uh, when you're drawing squares you can draw them on any particular axis by clicking, dragging, and then releasing. Or you can even draw squares on other faces and surfaces. So here I've got a square on a square with more squares and so forth. And depending on where I release it you'll see that it tries to snap to different axes and different dimensions. Once you have a square you can then work with it and divide it up and so forth. Uh, but basically that's drawing squares. You click and drag and it'll snap to different edges. You'll notice that here it snaps to the edge of this other square and it'll also snap to endpoint. Uh, and you'll notice throughout SketchUp the mouse cursor will show you all kinds of informational hints about what it's doing. So in this point it's showing this green circle and it's saying endpoint. That means that it's snapping to the endpoint of that segment or that corner of that box. Um, you can see that at different points as you move along with these different drawing tools it automatically kind of wants to snap to different things like endpoints. Uh, here it'll actually snap to the midpoint if we zoom in on this. And if we look at this line here that just goes from the corner down to this intersection as you move along that, you can see it's snapping to it, and then as I get close to the middle, boom, it'll snap to and tell you that here's the midpoint of that line. So you don't have to measure it, you don't have to uh, think too much about where, okay, how can I get to the midpoint of this, how do I divide it? It'll automatically snap to a midpoint. Uh, so then from that point you can, say, divide the square into two squares, or actually rectangles. Um, now, once we start getting some geometry in here, Let's switch back to our select tool, which the keyboard shortcut is just the space bar. And you can see that when you click on some of these shapes, they'll get this kind of blue dotted selection indicator. And depending on which one you click on, it changes. Now, you can select multiple faces by holding down shift on the keyboard. You can see again it changes the mouse pointer to a plus and minus. And now you can select multiple faces and even across other objects. So here I've got all of these different faces selected. So now if I did something to these, like rotated them, or changed them, or moved them, I would be moving all of them at once. So, and I'm just going to do a controller command Z to undo. I'm going to hit spacebar again to switch back to my select tool. And to deselect something, if you just click into open space, it deselects whatever you had selected. So, when we're dealing with geometry, we're dealing with faces, which are what we're selecting here, and there's also edges, which are highlighted in solid blue. So in this case, I'm selecting individual edges of this shape. 
or selecting individual faces or surfaces of the shapes. So I'll be referring to things as edges and corners, um, as well as faces and surfaces, and that's what I mean. Edges kind of make up the boundaries of a shape, and the surfaces kind of define the inner dimensions of a shape. Now I'm going to select all of these by just clicking out into nowhere space and dragging a selection box around them all. And here you can see I've got both surfaces and edges selected. And I'm just going to hit delete on the keyboard to clear that out. Now we're going to draw some circles. And we just switch to our circle or ellipse tool. And you'll see that by default it kind of aligns to the ground plane. So now if I click, I'm basically drawing out a boundary from the center of a circle out to its edge. And when I release, just like releasing with the square, you've drawn a circle now. Um, if I switch over to my selection with the spacebar, I can select the center surface, or you'll notice that this circle is made up of uh, individual straight lines. It's not a really smooth circle, and if I zoom in here, you can see it's just a series of flat lines that sort of define a rough geometric circle. Now, you can control how smooth or how sharp edged that circle is. If I select this one and delete it to get rid of it, and I go back to my circle tool, notice down here in the lower right we have a number of sides. So if I drop this down to, say, six sides, when I draw that, whoop, actually six and then hit enter, Do -do -do. Okay, six, enter, then I basically get a six-sided polygon. Uh, if I change this and I just do an undo with Control or Command Z, if I conversely go all the way up to say like 64, get in here, 64, enter. Now the next circle I make is going to have 64 segments that make up the outer circle. And you can see that this is a much smoother circle. And if I zoom in, you can see that the individual segments or the corners are much shorter. There's a lot, a lot more of them that make up that curve and define it. But again, just like a square or any other shape, you know, once you've got the geometry drawn, you have a surface you can select and an edge. And if you hold down shift, you can select both of them at the same time. Um, that's basics of drawing a circle. Uh, you can draw circles on surfaces as well. I can click and draw a circle on this surface. And if I select one of these inner ones and even hit delete, I've then basically cut a hole in that surface. So you can use some basic shapes to kind of build up more complex geometry. And again, I'm holding down the middle mouse scroll to automatically temporarily switch to orbit to move around. Um, but those are circles. Uh, what if you wanted to draw a specific sized circle? Uh, well, at this point, I've got my 64 segment circle. I'm going to drop that back down to 24. And you'll notice that same field changes once I draw a circle. As I'm drawing it, uh, it shows me the radius in whatever units you have set up. In this case, I have the English or US units of inches and feet. So now if I release that, that's the size. But now let's say that that's close, but it's not what I wanted. Maybe I wanted it to be 26 feet even. If I just delete this part and hit enter, then that snaps it down. Or maybe I wanted 12 feet. Or maybe I want 16 feet 5 inches. Whatever number you type in there, as long as you do it before you draw anything else, it basically sets the dimensions for your last shape. In this case, the radius of this circle. All right, and that's drawing circles. So now I'm going to select that and delete it. And we're going to draw some more complex shapes by switching over to our line tool or the pencil tool. So this basically gives you a way to just start defining segments. So if I just click here and then just start clicking other places, I'm basically laying down geometry. And then when I come back to my center point, you can see it snaps. And once I've closed that shape, it's now created that geometry. Now, I can also then use the same tool to help kind of 
cut up or modify my geometry. So maybe I wanted to add a segment between this corner and this corner. I can click, and I've released the mouse at this point. I'm just moving this around. And then once I click again, it will create that edge. And again, I can just click on a corner, click there. Or maybe I want to draw a line that is midway down this side and connect it to the midway point on this side. Well, as we saw earlier, if I just move along, you can see it'll snap to a midpoint. So I click once, and then as I drag along here, if I zoom in a little bit, change my view a little bit, where is my, there we go. It is now snapped to the midpoint there. So now without any actual measuring on my part, I know that this segment and this segment are the same length. I know that this segment and this segment are the same length, and the midpoint is for any segment, so you can actually keep dividing faces by just snapping to those midpoints. So that's one of the handy snapping features. And you'll also notice that when I first go to start to draw something, my line goes from being black to when I get close, it'll snap. And in this case, it's turned green, and it even says on green axis, which means that's a straight line on that green axis. If I click and now if I move along here you can see that that's a straight line on the red axis it snaps to that axis okay and if I click again and if I move down in this case it's moving on the blue axis so in that case I've basically drawn a segment going in each of the three axes exactly now let's say I'm done drawing this line to finish the line even if it's not closed you can just hit the space bar which switches you back to your select tool all right, so let's kind of play around with that. Those are uh, different geometry tools so far that we've learned. So if I draw a rectangle, I can take a circle and let's see, I'll go to the midpoint here and I'm going to pull out and draw a circle. And as I'm looking at that, wouldn't it be cool if I made sort of a tombstone kind of shape out of it so that the circle actually goes to the edge on both sides. Well, I'm just going to undo with Control or Command Z. I know if I start from my midpoint with my circle, I can just snap it to this edge, and then I know that that circle goes completely from corner to corner all the way around. But we have this line running down the center here, and we have this part of the circle over here. Well, I can get rid of those by holding or tapping the space bar. I can select that line segment, delete it, I can select this line segment and delete it. So now I have this sort of tombstone shape. But let's say that I want to sort of make a jagged crack down the center of it. Well, I can take my pencil tool and just pick a point and start drawing some segments in here. And I'm just kind of picking some random spots. And now that I'm done drawing, I hit or tap the spacebar. And from here, I can decide to get rid of this inner edge. Oh, you can see I actually had one segment that snapped to the wrong spot. So let me redo that. I'm just going to do Control Z to undo. I'm going to move to a different angle here. And I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to pick up where I left off at the tip there and put it in there. And I'm going to tap spacebar since I'm done and I'm going to rotate. And I can just select that delete it, and if I wanted to, I could even delete this. So here we've created a relatively complex piece of geometry uh, with only a few basic clicks. But now what if we wanted, let's say, this particular edge of this to be longer or further down? Well, just like you can select edges, you can also move edges around. So here's the Move tool. With that selected, I can actually drag segments, or let's say that I have a circle on that surface with a hole there. If I wanted to move that hole down here to this corner, I can actually select that edge and move that to a different part of the surface. So. Again, selecting something and then choosing move. You'll notice that 
right now it's saying on green axis. So it's actually snapping to that green axis and it even pulls that arc larger. All right. So there's a lot that you can do with some basic basic drawing tools. So I'm going to select all and delete that. I'm going to switch my camera just back to ISO. All right. Now, what about we've been working in two dimensions. What about three dimensions? Well, any shape that you create, I'm just going to pull a square out here, a circle, and then I'm going to combine two of them. Let's see here. I'll go with a circle with a rectangle coming out of it. Oops. And I'm just going to delete these inner segments so I have kind of a more complex shape. So any of these shapes that you have, you can use the pull tool, which is push and pull, and it is the P key on the keyboard. So another good keyboard shortcut to know is P. And you can actually see that when you have that tool selected, it will give you the selection highlight over whatever face you're rolling over. So if I wanted to pull some three dimension into this, I can click and drag and actually pull that up. And I'm getting a kind of strange artifacting or cut through with this, but I think it has to do with my recording software. So let me make a new new file here real quick. All right. And I'll just leave our default person there for a second. And we'll make our little rectangle here. And I'm going to hit P on the keyboard to switch to pull. And you can see I've now pulled up a large cube. And you can even pull and push faces in. Now, Let's combine this with some of the tools that we've already learned by, say, taking a rectangle. We'll draw a rectangle on the surface of this. And again, I did that by just switching to rectangle, snapping to this edge here. And if I just click and drag, and now I click again, now I have a face here. So if I take my push and pull tool, I can pull that face out to give it some more dimension. I'm going to hit undo or I can push that face back in. And you'll notice that when you hit that back face here, you'll get this kind of strange little geometry indicator. And it says on face, when I release it, it actually pushes that all the way through and makes a hole. Now we can also do the same with our circle. So let's say that we wanted to cut a hole or make an arch in the bottom of the our little doorway here. I can click and draw part of a circle on there. I'm going to tap the space bar and select this bottom edge. And you'll notice that when I delete this bottom edge, since there's no edge to support this surface, that surface also disappears. Okay, I can actually then take my push pull and push this all the way to the back. It says on face. And again, it's pop punched a little hole there. And you can use this simple technique of just starting with a few pieces of geometry. And depending on which faces or edges you keep or discard, you can really build up some complex geometry fairly quickly. So here I've also, oops, that snapped to the wrong part. I want this to be on the surface. All right, so there I've got a pretty complex shape, but if I use my push-pull, I can actually create a hole in that shape as well. So this push-pull is a handy way to kind of trim and shape your objects as you're modeling them. All right. And that's the basics of how you kind of pull two-dimensional shapes into uh, three-dimensional shapes. So for instance, using our context of designing stuff for uh, foam models, I could switch to my top view here, and I'm going to use switch my standard view to parallel, and I'm going to switch to my standard view of top, or just uh, controller command the number one, and let's say that I use, I'm going to kind of create a foam wing shape. I can start with a rectangle, I can then 
make it have a rounded end. I'm going to tap the space bar so I can select these segments and delete them. And from here, I can then take this and pull this up into a thickness of, we'll say, our dollar store foam. Now, you can actually make sure that your model fits exactly your right dimensions by specifying how far you pull something up. So if I undo that push-pull command, if I, and you'll notice down here in the corner it says distance, if I pull this up, that distance changes. And I can actually just go back and say, okay, I want this to actually have only pulled up 3 sixteenths. And there it is. And that's actually the thickness of your common Adams brand Dollar Tree foam board is 3 sixteenths. You see it's very thin. Now, let's say that we wanted to create more of a jet style wing that has kind of a taper to it. Well, I'm going to delete this. I could actually start out by just kind of drawing my wing shape however I want it. And once I have that, I can then use my push pull to pull that up and then set my thickness. And I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Now, what if we'd realized, oh, this wing needs to be a lot longer and come out this way? Well, let me undo my push pull so I'm back to just my two dimensional geometry or my flat geometry. I'm using Command or Control and tapping 1 to switch to top view. Well, if I select this edge, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I can use the Move tool to drag that along and make the wing longer, or maybe make it a forward swept wing or more of a sweep. And you'll notice the little kind of elastic line that appears from the point where I started, and here it's turned to a dotted red, meaning it's moving along that red axis. Or if I slide it up this way, you can see there it's moving along and snapping to the green axis. That's called inference, and you'll hear me refer to things inferring to each other as we get more deep into modeling of things. And that's basically the SketchUp kind of watching what you're doing and trying to help you along and, and keep things snapping to things that you really want them to. And uh, when you don't want them to, you can kind of pull away or change it and not use the inference. Uh, in the same way, if I wanted to, say, uh, draw a line on here from this point to that point, point in the wing, and let me move that forward a little bit so it's a little easier to see. If I want to draw a line wherever, you know, there's a straight line from this point forward, I can take that line tool and I can either draw it this way, and I know that it's snapping along there, or if I have my line tool or my pencil tool, if I just hold and rest that over there for a second, you'll notice that there's a little green dotted line that extends from that. That's an inference line. So now it's saying, okay, so boom, that's where from this point is a straight line to that point. So you can infer lines to things. So then maybe I can say, okay, I want it to go straight to this point, and then I want it to go along to, say, this point. But I know that this is lined up directly with that point right there by, because of that inference line. And again, you can just kind of hover over a line for a minute, and then you can see that you'll get different inference indicators from that as you move around. So maybe I wanted to put a line a little bit out here, but on the same level as this current corner. I can then click, and I know that that line is lined up with this point here because it inferred that with the mouse. All right. And that covers the basics of kind of drawing and manipulating your geometry. Um, one last kind of quick fun tool that I'll leave you to play around with um, that we're going to get deeper into later is this little tool up here, which is the uh, offset tool. And what this does is it allows you to pick a surface or an edge and then draw another 
line in relation to it. So in this case, I can use that to make sure that my inner circle is perfectly centered with my other circles. And then if I wanted to, I could select both of them and use push-pull and create more three-dimensional geometry. But we'll get into the offset in a different lesson. But here we go. That's your basics for kind of drawing geometry. At this point, I'd recommend playing around with all of these tools that we covered today and getting used to them and kind of seeing how they behave. And uh, do that for a little bit before you go on to the next lesson where we get deeper into uh, kind of working with geometry that we've drawn or kind of how to approach creating geometry. So go play with it and uh, have some fun.